I'm your host, Sapthin Bharti, and welcome to TFR Newsroom. Rookout is announcing Live Logger to complement their existing live debugger for dynamic observability into modern applications. To talk about this new product or this new release, we have with us Odette Karet, Director of Product Management at Rookout. Odette, it's great to have you on the show. Hello, thank you for having me. Before we talk about this new announcement, uh, quickly remind our viewers what is Rookout all about and how you're re leveraging Rook? Rookout is a developer-first platform for collecting data and troubleshooting uh, problems in production and cloud-native applications. Uh, we provide a, a live debugger application that lets developer fetch data with a click of a button, even from applications that are considered far and, and even dangerous at times. I also want to go a bit uh, deeper into um, debugging. As much as we like to create new applications, new services, you know, new products, what is more important is the reliability or consistency, business continuity. So talk about the importance of debugging for modern workloads. Also, debugging is something which is which has been around forever. So uh, there are traditional debugging, and because of cloud native and all those things, we also have modern debugging. So talk about the importance. Is also talk about uh, the difference between traditional and modern or Rookout's approach, and how you help even the legacy workloads. Sure thing. Uh, so as you said, traditional debugging has been around since uh, the dawn of software engineering. And when we used to think about traditional debugging, we either used to think about printing log lines or about setting a breakpoint that stops the application. And those are things that would work as long as the application was running on my own desktop. In uh, cloud native applications, in remote applications, in uh, very dynamic and elastic applications, uh, setting a breakpoint and stopping the application is just not something that you can do. Uh, and printing a log line uh, and trying to fetch it from hundreds or thousands of, of Kubernetes clusters is not something that uh, is expected of, of an engineer to do. Definitely not in real time. And when a problem happens uh, in modern applications, the expectation is to be able to solve it within minutes. Uh, and you don't have the hours we used to have for trying to reproduce the issue locally and trying to add a log line and waiting for another release. Uh, so modern debugging comes to fix all of that. Modern debugging is about giving the old experience, the same experience that an engineer is used to, of setting a breakpoint and getting data. Uh, but uh, we also provide the ability to do that with a remote, with an elastic applications where uh, the Rookout SDK is deployed in hundreds of dynamically uh, created pods. Uh, and when you set a breakpoint, you immediately start getting data to your application. So you get the user experience of traditional debugging, but the power of applying it to modern and complex applications. Excellent. Uh, now let's just quickly talk about the cultural or people or team aspect. We are seeing a lot of uh, cultural movements, revolutions happening there. Of course, DevOps, DevSecOps, SREs, uh, these terms keep coming up. Uh, developers' roles are changing, operators' roles are changing. So where does the bug for debugging stop? Which team is responsible for it? Or is it, you know, uh, across the organization responsibility? I grew up in a software engineering world where it, there was a very clear separation between dev and QA and ops. And the transition into DevOps has blurred that line. And software engineers who developed the application are, are more than ever expected to be uh, on call and to make sure that their app is running 24 seven. So when, a, when a, an application, ha uh, when a problem happens in a running applications, yes, sometimes the first response will be the ops team, will be the IT team, just the you know, monitoring and making sure that uh, we know when something happens. But the actual solving of the problem, the actual reaching the root cause and understanding what change has caused the problem is more and more a problem of the so of the software engineer who developed the application. So that means that software engineers need to take into account that their code is going to run in production, that they are going to have to be able to troubleshoot it, and that when uh, the pager duty wakes them up uh, at 2 a.m. in the middle of the night on a weekend, they will have to be able to instantly reach the line of code that is causing a problem, 
to find a fix for it and to deploy it as soon as possible. There are certain uh, terms that Rookout loves to use and like dynamic observability, there's understandability is there. Uh, depending on who you talk to, uh, when I ask somebody, hey, you know, when you talk about the observability, does your job stop knowing that, hey, something went wrong, now go figure it out what went wrong. So telling you something went wrong is good, but doing something about it also even more important. So that's why we look at the whole observability all the way to understandability. And then we look at debugging, you know, of course, it's like finding and solving the problem. So, 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 so can you talk about what does all these terms mean? Is there really different disciplines for each term or we are just using different terms for different teams? Uh, so explain that to me. Uh, thank you for asking that. So observability used to mean being able to see what's going on, being able to have the right log line printed, have the right metric printed, have the right uh, distributed tracing view uh, graph generated and uh, available to engineers, and being able to see what's happening in the uh, in the level of log lines is an important and challenging task. Understandability takes that challenge one step further. Understandability means not just seeing what happened, but also understanding how my application behaves, understanding how my code behaves in real time, being able to actually see my code in motion uh, and not just see the after effect of my code running, namely the, the printed log lines and the collected metrics. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is the announcement, uh, live logger. What is it? And, and let's also kind of, if you can, compare it because you already have, you know, uh, logging tools. So, so talk about it, what it is, why you created it, what kind of unique problem is going to solve for your users. So live logger, the idea for it came out of conversations that we had with customers as we were pitching uh, our classic offering, the, the live debugger. Uh, and we very often the conversation moves into logging challenges. The customer will speak about how much they are spending, how much money they are spending on logs, or how they are worried about the performance impact of adding a new log line, or how much time it takes them to expose new logs, not to mention existing logs, which are already written in the code. But in order to switch them on and off, uh, it will require a restart of the whole application, and uh, th that is something that uh, you just cannot do, especially uh, when you're handling a, a production incident. Um, and from those insights, we thought we could take our uh, inherent ability of bytecode manipulation and changing the way the code runs and adding uh, prints uh, into a live application, and we could take that one step forward and rather than doing it for a single line of code by adding a single line of log uh, where a breakpoint is set, we could do that in a very robust way into every single existing line of code that already prints a log line. In modern applications, very often, uh, the DevOps engineers will say this uh, application is running uh, in warning level and only log lines of warning or error level are printed because we want to save cost because we want to reduce the performance impact. But Rookout's bytecode manipulation ability actually gives us the ability to switch on debug log lines, to switch on trace log lines, to switch on log lines dynamically all around the application and expose data that was uh, hidden uh, so far, but is now needed in order to troubleshoot a, a problem. Now, the second question that a customer will ask us, well, now you're going to cost me a lot of money. Now you're going to impact performance because every single debug and trace log line is going to be printed. And to address that, we also added the ability to very dynamically and uh, in high granularity filter which log lines will be turned on. We provide the ability to only turn on, for example, log lines that contain uh, a specific string, or to only turn on log lines that retain to a specific user or account or service by integrating with uh, existing uh, tracing tools. So we provide the ability to instantly switch on, turn on the light uh, all over your application without further hurting your application. 
since you already have uh, a lot of tools in your arsenal, if I may use it as a word, uh, how does it complement your existing tool? You know, uh, live debugger is a great example. So, so, so talk about it. How does it integrate, integrate with your whole stack and how it helps and complements these tools? So we saw when working with customers that live debugger is something uh, that will help you pinpoint a specific line of log. And it will be very effective when you already know where the problem is. If you are the engineer who wrote the code, if you are the engineer who is familiar with the code and can set a breakpoint at the right place, it will add a log line that was missing uh, before that and will help you fetch the data you need. But in very advanced applications, in modern applications, more often than not, you only wrote one of dozens or hundreds of, of microservices and you do not know where to even start uh, the search. In those cases, just switching everything on and seeing what looks suspicious is a much more robust uh, and helpful way for engineers to start collecting data. You look at the logs in, in a very familiar uh, log tail user interface, you see where you think the problem is, and then uh, you zoom in on that. So kind of a, it gives more of a macro approach compared to, to the micro approach provided by our live debugger. And uh, you start by searching the macro, then you zoom into the micro. So the tools really complement each other and help you solve both parts of the search for, for the problem. Right. You alluded to this earlier, but I want to just reiterate that is that. Can you also talk about, because as we discussed, there are legacy traditional logging uh, around. Uh, what pain points do you address with, with this? when it comes to traditional logging? So traditional logging means that you have to worry about logging cost. We speak to customers who, who mention, who know exactly how many megabytes or gigabytes or terabytes or petabytes they are uh, paying for and take tremendous efforts to they invest entire sprints in reducing logging costs, in deleting logs, in hiding logs that would have helped them because logging is expensive and is getting more expensive as applications scale up. Uh, logging has also always had a performance impact. When my application is busy printing a log line and filtering it and shipping it to my logging service, uh, it consumes CPU and memory and IO, out, uh, IO resources that could otherwise be invested in serving my customers. So these are traditional logging challenges that we are trying to address. Um, the third traditional the cha uh, logging challenge that we are trying to address is just that, you know, you can print everything. You can write everything. You can write very detailed log lines with uh, every single variable printed uh, just in case something happens. But then when something happens, you end up searching through a very uh, seemingly infinite number of nearly identical log lines. And being able to find that needle in the haystack has always been a challenge of logging. And we are trying to address that by providing a more dynamic and flexible and robust approach to only printing the log lines that are needed so that when you do need them, you can quickly and easily search through them and uh, find uh, the data point that you need. Now, when we do look at debugging, you know, the thing is that we are looking at systems that are always running. You don't shut the system down. So is it also possible to manipulate code on the fly while the code is still running and add logs and other content there so that your, 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 your workload is not down and developer can go ahead and continue to do that? I may have mentioned earlier, because we love speaking about it, that Rookout Live Debugger, our traditional tool, uses bytecode manipulation to dynamically change the code that is actually running uh, while uh, a developer's application is running. We use that to create new log lines. Live Logger uh, uses a similar technology, but it also adds an integration with uh, existing logger services. We integrate with tools like Log4j and Winston and Log4net. Uh, and we integrate with those tools in order to understand where there are log lines uh, going to be printed. Uh, and we use the same bytecode manipulation technology to instrument these tools in real time and make sure that they start printing new log lines uh, on the fly. 
So that allows us to change how the application runs, how the application prints logs without requiring uh, the developer to change code and restart the application and wait for the new data to flow. Oh, that- Thank you so much for talking about not only, of course, observability, understandability, debugging, live logging, but also uh, the the holistic approach and, of course, the new tool uh, that you folks are announcing. Thank you for your time, and I would love to have you again on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.